This is the trommel that I built to sift compost and also uh, uh, dirt and get the rocks out. Uh, it uses a 55 gallon drum with 12 windows cut in it. I used a plasma cutter and a plasma cutter to cut out the end. I'll, I'll show you that. It has um, half inch opening welded wire. Uh, the, the wire itself is 0 0.063 in diameter, so a little stouter than the stuff you can get at the hardware store. It uses a number 40 chain um, as the drive for it. It's got a half inch drill that is the power source and a homemade trigger lock. And it's trapped between these two bars here. It keeps the drill from spinning. Um, I used a um, Hyundai uh, car spindle that I got from a friend. I'll put that uh, part number in the description if you want it. I think just there's a lot of these around. You could use them, maybe even get one from a junkyard. Um, the frame is two and a quarter inch box tubing off of a uh, carport, the post for a carport. And then the wheels I added later, so I kind of had a, a kind of a foobar moment trying to figure out how to mount those. <clears throat> the hardest part was uh, making the end of the drum stiff enough to um, attach the spindle to it. So I have quite a bit of footage of that and uh, pictures of how I did that. So I'm gonna spend most of my time talking about that and how I cut the uh, the windows in the drum. I had to uh, shim the, uh, the chain around the drum as well. And uh, I'll show you a couple clips of it running. I'm sorry about all the noise. Somebody's running a blower and I hear some planes, but um, a wheelbarrow fits nicely underneath it. I designed it to, to have the wheelbarrow fit completely underneath. Um, try not to get the sun in your eyes here. Um, the wheelbarrow comes right to the end of the drum and then I put this, uh, this tray in the back and uh, if, I, if I get a lot of dirt in it, some rocks and stuff come out and um, compost, uh, big clumps of compost will come out into the tray. Um, but it works really well. Um, it's nice and stable. Um, and I added a guard. I'll show you that here in a minute. Uh, it keeps all of the uh, the compost and uh, dirt or whatever going into the wheelbarrow. To um, to clean it out, that I have a reversible drill and I I turned the veins. There's these. Uh, there's a vein here in the front to help keep stuff um, in, and there's one there that kind of redirects it to the back when it's spinning in one direction. And then the idea was initially to reverse the direction, but what I found is. Um, it's just much easier to put a shovel in there and kind of scoop out the rocks and then put them into the tray and I'll show you that. So there's the guard mounted. Um, you can see that it goes right into the wheelbarrow there. And it does a good job. It's a little wimpy. It's just quarter inch thick um, plywood and then two um, brackets. And you notice that the brackets are the same color as a drum and I used um, the steel dropouts from the drum as uh, parts to make this this right here is just a it's a finger guard to keep your fingers out of it and then this little one on top here is really just to keep the spindle from getting so wet um, when it rains here a lot so you know the idea is that that the whole thing is going to live outside except for the drill and the guard and then um, be able to use it the the car spindle itself is sealed and it has zero play in it. Uh, the spindle here, this half inch rod I had on hand, the pillow blocks um, came from Amazon. I'll show you, I'll insert a picture of that along with the 11 tube sprocket that you see there. And they're just held on with set screws. So I'm using a, a number 40 chain that's welded to the drum as, as the gear, if you would, if you want to call it that. And uh, the way that I, I did that is I wrapped the chain around the drum and then I cut it so that the two ends almost, you know, as close as I, I could get them, um, smaller than a master link. And then I inserted the master link and, you know, I made sure that the chain was, was plenty long enough and it still was, was pretty loose on there. So I took the master link back out, pulled the two ends together as tight as possible, and then I did some measurements. I'll draw a little picture 
and show you what I ended up with. All right, so to calculate the shim thickness, I wrapped the chain, it wrapped all the way around the drum until it was as tight as possible without the two links touching. Um, so it has to be less than a, um, a master link. And um, I measured the chain uh, between two pins and it was 0.65 and then I measured the gap. And I, I had this pulled tight with a uh, zip tie, as tight as I could get it. And so that dimension was 0.392. So the, the delta circumference that I need to um, take up the slack that I need to take up is 0.65 minus 0.392, which is 0.258. And so that's the shim it needs to take up this, uh, this slack. Uh, the calculation for the radius is delta C equals two times delta R, where delta R is the shim thickness. And then it's 0.258 divided by 2 pi equals delta R. And that calculation turns out to be 0 0.041. And that's why I ended up using 36 thousandths thick material. So I used a height gauge and a granite countertop as a surface plate to do the layouts on the metal plate that uh, attaches to the drum. Um, in this picture, I'm getting ready to mount the plate onto the rotary table. And the first thing was to mill the hole in the center and then followed by the four um, bolt circle holes, as you see in this picture. And then I did a quick spindle fit check while it was still on the mill, so I didn't have to remove it. And then in this picture, you'll see there's the, the spindle on the left, uh, the other plate, which mounts to the frame in the middle there, that black one. And I made that the same way. And then the first plate on the right. <clears throat> and then of course, this is what they look like, um, all three of them together. So this is a 55 gallon drum here. And I, I need to have a hole in the end of it here so that this bearing protrusion can fit down inside the drum. And, uh, so I wanted a, a fairly true hole so that I could also drop a, like a soup can or something down in there and then pop it on the sides just to keep debris from coming back through. So I found uh, a soup can that's a little bit smaller than the one I'm going to pop rivet in there, cut the bottom off, screwed it in the center, and now I have to take my plasma cutter and go around the edge here. So after I cut the hole out, um, you can see what it looks like here. There's the hole, and then here is the soup can that I modified, just uh, cut it with some um, tin snips, painted the inside, and then dropped it in. And then it'll be pop riveted in the center. So I'm gonna make these today, and I need four of these pieces here, and I'll cut those out of those straps and then I need two each of these to fit on top there. Material here that I got from a neighbor. The only thing is it's all different thicknesses. They're all the same width, different thicknesses, so I have to stack them. Got all the layouts done. Now it's time to cut and grind. We gotta grind the angles, or cut and grind the angle, and then cut and grind that little relief there for the spindle to clear. I went ahead and finished all the straps, cut them to length, and then cut the angles on them. I also located the holes that are going to be drilled all the way through uh, all three of the straps and this piece of steel here into the drum. That's really going to be the only thing that holds this piece um, against the end of the drum is uh, bolts. And then the outside is all going to be welded. The two straps on the end here sit on top of the rim. And then these two sit down inside and um, that should give me a nice solid um, mounting surface for my bearing. Well, in this photograph, you're, you're looking straight down on the drum and uh, you'll see that I have that 50 pound weight holding things down. And um, as I said earlier, I, I take the tape measure and I hook it over the, the hole in the center of that plate and then I measure it out to the edge of the drum. And I did that all around and I got it as close as I could. Um, and after I got it really, really close, I, I put another 
weight on it and then I tacked it in place. <laughs> So in this picture, you'll see that there's three little straps that are kind of laid out there together on the upper left. And then on the right, you'll see that there's a uh, one of the, the same type of little straps is, is clamped to the uh, one of the, the bars that's uh, sitting on top of the rim. Um, I got kind of cold feet and I decided I should go ahead and add some stiffeners uh, so that the, the mount would be stiff in that direction as well. In this picture, you'll see that the drum is all painted, all everything's done, and the spindle is mounted. After I had everything welded, I then bolted the spindle into the center, and then I bolted through all these places right here and made sure everything was nice and tight and that the spindle rotated properly. And I hadn't yet taken this uh, metal plate and, and welded it to the frame, so I sat that on top of the spindle, and then I took a, uh, a level, and I, I put that on that metal plate, and then I rotated it around using the spindle bearing and measured from the top of the level down to the edge of the drum and found the high spot and low spot. And after that, I then calculated what shim thickness I would need and uh, got real lucky. I put two shims, 15,000 thick washers actually, underneath the spindle here and here, tightened it back up, and I was almost dead nuts. I think I had maybe uh, 30 thousandths, uh, you know, out of plane. So that worked out really well, and this was by far the trickiest part of this build. Uh, I'm just now finishing up using this stainless steel bucket to form the templates to cut the windows in the drum. There's two of them that are finished. Um, I'll screw those to the drum and then run around it with the plasma cutter. So we're going to take this and use this as a guide to cut about an inch and a quarter lip all the way around here. All right, so here's the trommel. It's all finished. The power head's not installed, but I'll... Uh, I'll show you a, a clip in a minute of it running with the power head. It just didn't want to restart. And I'm probably going to go to a different design for the power head. It was hopped around a little bit. And I think uh, it, the, there's something wrong with the carburetor. It ran once and then it wouldn't run again. So I think I'll replace the power head with another design, which I'll show later. First test run, still need to cut the shaft off, but I wanted to see how it was going to work. Okay. 
That's pretty tight. Tight enough. But the trigger lock was pretty simple. It's a piece of inch and a half PVC conduit that I cut off. And I cut it off like, you know, right there. And then I split it down the middle. And uh, the length is just slightly shorter than a socket. That socket ha happens to be just about the same width as the drill. And so I put that socket in a vise and then I, uh, I uh, well, first of all, I, I flattened out the piece of PVC and then I draped it over um, a socket in the vise like this. And I uh, used a heat gun to, uh, to initially flatten this out and then um, put it over this and uh, use the heat gun to kind of form it in place and um, and then um, use some water to cool it off to keep it uh, the right shape. The whole thing took me about, I don't know, 35, 40 minutes to make. Bonded the piece of wood on here and this is nothing more than a bolt that was straightened out. A uh, nice long bolt that cut off the end and then a wing nut on there. And it works, seems to work pretty well. Um, nice and tight on the handle and uh, doesn't vibrate loose. I've been sifting some of this dirt here. It's got a fair number of rock, little small rocks up to um, fist size in it. So let me show you how that works here. We're gonna turn it on and then I'll show you how I pull the rocks out. I used to reverse it, but it works better just by um, putting a shovel in. So I'll show you that. A few rocks in it now. Let that sit down and then I'll show you how I pull the rocks out. Now, sometimes they come out the front. That's why I put that bin there. There's quite a few rocks in it. 